Speaking of PCSK9 inhibitors, turn back to Dr. Budoff a little bit about that exciting, I guess I was going to say new class of medicine. They're not that new anymore, but, but uh, still uh, exciting. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the PCSK9 inhibitors, how they work, uh, who you might use them in? Does azetamide uh, still have a role with PCSK9 inhibitors around? Uh, what are your thoughts about those issues? Yeah, so uh, thank you. And I, I think it's uh, really important to think about, you know, as we, uh, you know, use our statins first and our diet and exercise first, that we do have ancillary therapies that have been proven uh, to add on to, to the statin background. Um, um, Dr. Var already mentioned one of the trials, the four-year trial, and that really showed us in patients with uh, uh, stable coronary disease that we can get an additional 15% event reduction uh, by adding uh, PCSK9 inhibitors. And the way that they work is really complementary to statins. So statins stop the synthesis of cholesterol. PCSK9s enhance the uh, reuptake uh, and degradation of cholesterol. So PCSK9 uh, is a protein uh, developed in, in the liver, uh, and basically it, it causes, uh, really kills, if, if you will, the LDL receptors on the liver. So we have a decrease in LDL receptors. The LDL floats in our bloodstream, does not get taken up by the liver, and our LDL levels stay elevated. If you block PCSK9 with these uh, monoclonal antibodies that are very specific, so really virtually no other side effects and really uh, work very directly on blocking PCSK9, we end up uh, lowering that protein. We end up with uh, many more LDL receptors and the liver can then lower LDL. And it's pretty remarkable and consistent that the PCSK9 inhibitors lower LDL by about 60%, uh, whether they're on a statin or not, depending on whichever LDL, uh, whichever PCSK9 we choose, uh, really, we get an additional 50 to 60% LDL lowering by using these therapies. So they work, they lower events, both, both trials with PCSK9 uh, inhibitors lower events by about 15%. They've been studied in stable coronary disease. They've been studied in patients with acute coronary syndromes um, and really show incremental benefit. I think once I've decided to use a PCSK9 because their LDL is still too high, whatever I perceive that to be based on our targets. And I know we'll talk a little bit more about targets later, but if I think that they're above their given target and I can't get there with statin monotherapy, I might try azetamide first. The Improve It trial did show a, a small but significant benefit. Um, but if that doesn't get them there, then I'm, I'm fairly quick to try a PCSK9 inhibitor. And if I do that, I usually personally stop the azetamide because they'll get to their goal almost always with statin plus PCSK9. And I don't need that additional benefit of azetamide anymore. And I'm a believer in less is more as far as number of therapies. So I'd rather not have them on three cholesterol medicines if two will do the job. I just have a quick correction for the audience here that thanks Dr. Budoff for the reminder. I misspoke. The Fourier data that I quoted are in those with stable uh, um, cardiovascular disease. It was the Odyssey study that looked at PCSK9 inhibitors and those with more recent events. So uh, just a quick correction on that. Oh, but you're basically right. I mean, it, it's, it's really the class of medicines that has shown a significant effect and there are differences between the two trials in terms of the population study, but viewed as a pair for a covered stable atherosclerosis mm -hmm. and Odyssey covered those with a recent acute coronary syndrome and goes back to a point, I think Dr. Budoff, you made about statins, you know, you tend to get earlier benefits, the sicker the patients, you tend to get more benefits, especially on harder events, the sicker the patients. And in an Odyssey outcome, we actually shot showed a reduction in all-cause mortality. That wasn't seen in Fourier, but in, in, in Odyssey outcomes, at least uh, there was a nominally statistically significant reduction in all-cause mortality. So the potential of, of lower LDL being better extends in the right patients at high risk, even to all-cause mortality. But I wonder, uh, in your practice, uh, Dr. Budov, any issue at all with injections? Have any patients said, I'm not going to take an injection because, of course, the PCSK9 inhibitors are injections? Yeah, you know, I, I was very concerned about this when this class was first being studied. You know, they, these uh, companies came and I, I was participating in these trials 
um, as an investigator, and I was very nervous about patients injecting themselves because we don't have we didn't have injectables in cardiology prior to this, really. I mean, other than a little bit of maybe Lovenox for short periods of time, we rarely used. Um, injectables, but but I do. I was surprised how well they are tolerated. Uh, honestly, uh, they're not frequent. They're every two weeks or every four weeks. Um, they are self injectors. Patients don't have to draw up a dose. It, they're they're pre pre measured. It, they're very simple uh, injector systems. So they just put them on their thigh or their abdomen and hit a button, and 15 seconds later they're done. So I really am surprised, but I find them to be very, very well tolerated. And I, I think people have done, a, I think the companies have done a nice job of making it simple for our patients to be on an injectable therapy. Yeah, I agree. I haven't found it to be as much of a barrier as I initially thought it would be.